I love their oil pastels. Let's see if I love their watercolors too. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artist at Play, and today I am going to be trying out the Van Gogh watercolors for the first time. These are by Royal Talons. This is their muted color set, it's the 12 pan set, their pocket box. So let's take a look at this. And I should mention this video is not sponsored. I bought this set myself longer ago than I care to admit, actually longer ago than I actually remember. <laughs> and I haven't had the chance to use it yet because I work in so many different art supplies that I just hadn't circled back to it yet. But I'm very excited to try it out today. So look at this package. It's a nice matte, sturdy plastic. It has like um, an indented, like mm, sculpted Van Gogh, the quality brand logo right on the front. Let's take a peek inside. Okay, so as you can see here, there are 12 pans. There's also a nice little palette here with six good sized mixing areas and a fun little brush. It's a nice little travel brush. Comes apart like this, and then it's just like a regular Taclon brush. Beautiful. I think that's a great touch. The only thing is, is I'm not necessarily coordinated enough to stick that back in there without ruining the bristles, so I'll just have to be careful with that. I think this will be a great palette to just take on the go. Okay, the Van Gogh palette for on the go. That's great marketing right there. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this. So right from the front, you can already see all the color swatches that have the Van Gogh logo on them. And they're... Obviously, each of the pans is individually wrapped with the color that indicates what's inside. We have the little indicator as to whether or not it is transparent or if it is going to be opaque. And light fast information right on the top. These are all light fast colors, and that's one reason why I went for the set. You know me, I'm a stickler for light fastness. I do believe they have light fast charts online for their their supplies and I will link that in the description below. Okay, so and each one of them also has like a reorder number. I was looking at Blick because that's where I typically buy things. I could not find the pans open stock on Blick or at Jerry's. However, they do offer the tubes as open stock. So if you get low on a color and you want to refill it, sometimes it's more economical to buy the tubes because you kind of get more bang for your buck and you can just refill as you go. However, I did notice that Amazon does have these available open stock. So I will link everything in the description below. They will be affiliate links. So if you do want to help out the channel or support me in any way, you could order through those links. I get a little bit of money for it. However, it's no additional cost to you. Anyways, so let's take a look at the colors that we have. We have this like nice beige color here and it has all the information on the sides. This one is titanium buff. I don't know if that's gonna focus or not. These are so little that it's hard to get it to focus, but that's this color. The pigment information is right on, is it the back? I know I've seen it. Oh, there it is. Now, I don't know if you can see that. But this one is PW6 and PBR7. For those of you who are interested in pigment information. And I should mention right now, I am not a watercolor expert. I love watercolors. But as I mentioned before, I work in a lot of other mediums. And my two main mediums are acrylic and colored pencil. However, I will be sharing my opinion on how how I feel about this palette in terms of what I like to look for in my artwork and hopefully that will help you but yeah I'm not like this isn't my main medium but I thought it would be fun to show you this palette okay so our next color number 238 it's that beautiful yellow color gamboge and then the pigment is PY154 and PR101 so it's got multiple pigments in this color the next one number 224 I'm assuming that's a reorder number
Jean Naples Rouge. Hang on. Naples Yellow Red. <laughs> Let's, I need to stick to English. I'm sorry. So the pigments are PY42PO43. So yes, there's that color. Ooh, this one, I'm really excited about this color. I'm also very excited that it's as light fast as the rest of them. So this one is PV19. So that's a single pigment paint. Ooh, this one's really pretty too. I just love the look of wrapped pans. It makes me think of candy. Like this seems like I'm going to unwrap it and there's going to be some yummy kind of caramel under there. This one is lavender. And it is a mix of pigments PB29, PV15, and PW6. I don't know if I mentioned that this is Quinacridone Rose. I don't know if I said the name of that one. Indigo. It's hard to see. It kind of looks black on here. We'll get a better indication once they are swatched. So this one is PB15, PBK6. This kind of blue green here, number 661. Turquoise green. Let me see if I will focus. PB15 and PV29. Ooh, I really like this one too. I got this set because I do a lot of natural like landscapes and things like that. And so I wanted some muted colors. So this is number 620, olive green. And the pigments are PG7, PY154 or 154. And this one, as you can see, they all have like the three for the light fastness. So they're all the same light fastness. Davies Gray? That's interesting. PBK11, PG7, and PBR7. This one actually looks like it could be caramel. Number 227, yellow ochre, one of my favorite colors in any medium. PY42, sepia, number 416, and this one, oh, hang on. I believe that says PBK7 and... PR101, maybe? And then we have number 715, neutral tint. And this one has PBR6. This one's also screwed up. I can't really read that very well. And PV19. So I could be a little off there because I couldn't read it very well. And I'm not as familiar with pigment names. But yeah, so this is what we have. I think I'm going to rearrange the colors, though, into a more pleasing color palette. I am also going to swatch them. I just kind of took some um, fluid watercolor paper, cut it down to size, and I'm going to make my own little swatch card here. And then I will put the, pig the pigment information and everything on there. But I think I'll put this in the order that I want to put them in. So we're going to take these out. And they do remove fairly easily. You can see there's like a little notch up here. You just kind of stick your nail in there. I'm going to figure out how I want to arrange it. And then I'll unwrap them. And then I'll do my swatches as I unwrap them. 
For the swatching part and the unwrapping, I'm most likely going to switch to time lapse because it's going to take a little bit. Uh, this is just kind of a preliminary. How do I want to do this? Some of you are probably cringing at the way I'm setting this up. However, we all have to work in the way that is most comfortable to us. The one thing that I'm kind of sad isn't in this set is a nice blue. But I might be able to mix something to get close to it. Like this has a lot of blue in it. This has a lot of blue in it. If I mix them together, it'll kind of ear closer to blue. I mean, obviously blue isn't one of those things that's fully mixable because it is a primary color. However, I don't think that it'll be um, that big of a deal. Trying to figure out how I want to do this in a way that makes sense to me. It may not, like I said, it may not make any sense to you. I think this is the order that I'm going to go with, though. So yeah, I am going to start unwrapping these and start swatching them. As much as I love the way these look wrapped, this is probably the most tedious part of the whole ordeal. Um, but something that I wanted to mention is you'll see me writing on the side of the pans. And what I am doing there is I'm writing the color name and the pigment information as well as the light fast rating. Just so that way there, if I fall in love with any particular color, I can replace it really easily. Okay, so now that I have these unwrapped, I think I am going to move them around again because um, I want this one to be up here and I want my indigo to go before my lavender. So I kind of misspoke earlier when I said I didn't have a nice blue. I mean, obviously the indigo is probably going to wash down, hopefully, to be a nice blue, but it's more of like a neutrally kind of color. And I was more or less speaking along the lines of like a light blue or like a sky type color because I like to do skies a lot. So I meant to, I, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, so I'm going to start with the swatches now. Okay, so first impressions with the swatches. Definitely have some colors that are more pigmented than the others. This indigo, holy guacamole. That did not take much at all to get that saturated. Whereas this turquoise um, green, hmm, it was a little bit of a struggle. It, it was not easy to get a good pigment payout. So I'm going to kind of finish up the swatch card by putting some information on it and things like that. But then I want to put these really to the test and do a piece with them so that I can really see how I feel about them in action. Okay, so starting off with my little project now, I decided that I just wanted to do a couple little illustrations. I have been really into gardening lately. We've been growing a lot of fruit and veggies in our garden. Unfortunately, I'm not able to grow lemons because we live in Maine. However, I've also been into like botanical illustrations lately. I just really love the looks of them. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to draw some lemons and some strawberries, which we do have in our garden. And that's where the inspiration for this came from. So let's talk more about these paints. I'm on the Royal Talons website right now, and this is what they have to say about their watercolors. Van Gogh watercolors are a student and artist level range of paints featuring brilliant, transparent, and intense colors with high tinting strength. Most colors are rated with the highest degree of light fastness, which is three plus marks, which is 100 plus years under museum conditions, with a few colors rated just one step below at two little signs which would be 25 to 100 years under museum conditions 
Thanks to the purity and uniform viscosity, these watercolors are easy to work with and easy to mix. Proudly produced in Holland with stringent quality control for a consistent experience with every purchase. And it looks like they have 72 colors available in 10 ml tubes and 72 colors available in pans. They also offer 22 sets. And they have a lot of these fun little pocket sets like the one I have. And I was looking at some of them. They're little pocket boxes. They have a beautiful floral one. They have one that is vibrant colors, obviously the muted colors, which is what I have. And they also have one that is just violets and pinks or pinks and violets. Very, very interesting. I will link their website as well as their Blick listing. And so you can get more information as well as their color chart. So I want to talk about my experience with these, obviously. So the first thing that I notice is that they lift really, really easily. I did not notice a huge tinting strength for all of them. Um, obviously, some pigments are going to tint more than others. It's like that in every set you have. The red tinted really well, whereas I was able to lift the yellows really easily so that I could correct mistakes and create certain effects. Something else that I noticed while working with them is that they dry really matte and it could just be these muted colors, but there can be a difference between something being muted and for their finish being dull. And these kind of have a little bit of a dull finish, kind of like a student grade watercolor, like you would expect for a student grade watercolor to have. Something else that I found to be really interesting is that not all of the colors that I have had the transparency on them. If you noticed before I unwrapped them, some of them had the little box that showed how opaque they were and some of them didn't. However, that information can be found on their color chart online. And for some reason, I didn't even think to test the opacity while I was doing my swatches. It just did not cross my mind. I did notice, however, that a few of the colors obviously were more opaque than others. Again, you're going to have that in different sets. The majority of the set is supposed to be transparent or semi-transparent. There's just a few that are semi-opaque or opaque, like the buff titanium is opaque. However, they all kind of have a little bit more opacity than I was expecting. They sort of feel like gouache. They have kind of that dry, chalky look when they're dry. And yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Not a ton, ton, ton of granulation in these that I noticed. A little bit in the indigo in the background, which let's talk about this background, okay? This blotchy background is through no fault of the paint. <laughs> it's basically because I just didn't, I didn't get my lazy butt up to go search for a wash brush so that I could do a nice even background. So that was on me. Again, I just wanted to play with the paints and see how they felt. And I really did enjoy working with these paints, though, like I said, and they're, they dried a little bit dull, not just lighter because all watercolor does, but a little bit dull, which I think might be good with some mixed media, which you will see me try towards the end of this video. And I am working on the Fluid 100 Hot Press watercolor paper, which is the same paper I used to swatch it. And I went between using wet and wet techniques to using dry and dry techniques. I found that both worked really well. The paint didn't spread as much as I was hoping, but it also, it got the job done. So like when I put it in the lemons, I did do wet and wet and it spread out and it was really nice, but it does need a lot of layering in some of those colors to get the payout that you're looking for. Other than, like I said, the indigo. The indigo, I didn't need as many layers to get the color saturation that I was looking for. Definitely a beautiful color. Probably my favorite out of the whole bunch, which is why I want to put it in the background. And I do think it really helped the lemons and the strawberries pop. And I did attempt to put a silver outline around them, but it didn't show up as well. So I came in with my white gel pen and put a highlight around it or like a nice outline around it to get it to stick out more. And I think that that worked really, really well. I had a lot of fun with these paints. They're not as 
pigmented as some of the other paints that I have used recently. However, they are supposed to be muted tones. I don't have any of their other colors. I would be curious to get the Vibrant Pocket Box and see how they compare and see if those colors pop a lot more and if they have more of a luscious, less dull finish than these. Okay, so here are my final two little illustrations, sort of. There's a wet spot here where I tried to touch something up because actually I wasn't even trying to touch something up there. This brush, <laughs> I don't know if you can see. See there's water droplets there. This holds water in the crease. Look at this. See that? So it's really convenient because you can just put it together, but it holds water in there and then it comes out when you don't expect it. So I was actually doing a touch up over here and because my brush was like this, water dripped out of this crack onto this spot here. I had to kind of blot it and now like my outline is all fuzzy. So that's super, super annoying. And it doesn't hold as much water as a watercolor brush probably should to begin with because it is just like a regular Taclon brush. I usually use these types of brushes for my like acrylics and stuff like that so there's that out of the way like was I able to get some fine lines when I wanted to yes I wasn't able to cover large areas without getting blotchiness and I did bring in a slightly bigger brush but I didn't have any of my good watercolor brushes down here I should have just gone up to the studio and grabbed them and the, like again this isn't very big either so I had a hard time getting smooth blends in the background because I didn't have a, a large brush on hand that being said, that's the most annoying thing about this brush. And it didn't keep its shape as well as I would have liked. Like, this is my first piece with it. I'm I'm not a huge fan. And again, look, it's still, because it's still wet, it's not taking anything right now. Because it was a big blob that I had to dot off, you can see here. Okay, so let's talk about the paints themselves. They do, now, all watercolor paints dry lighter than they are when you put them down. It's just the nature of the beast. However, these also dry a little bit chalky, like a little bit matte. And I know these are supposed to be muted colors, but muted doesn't necessarily mean matte. It means like earth tones, things like that. This isn't as like, I don't know. I just, they're just kind of matte, which isn't my favorite when it comes to watercolor. If I want to work with a matte medium, then I'm going to go for gouache. So these kind of dry some of the colors dry similar to a gouache look, but without like the thickness of it. So there's still some transparency. I don't know how to explain it. They're matte, but not necessarily as opaque. And you can kind of tell here. Now you can't necessarily tell with all of the looking at, I mean, you can kind of tell looking at the pans dry, but yeah, they definitely dried matter than I personally like for a watercolor. However, I do think they're going to be great for mixed media in that case. And matte isn't always so bad because you can get good photos of things when they're matte. But again, that's not necessarily what I look for in a watercolor. That's what I look for in something like a gouache. That being said, I don't think it's too bad for the price. I think it's great for sketchbook work, for different exercises, and for mixed media. I was able to come over it with my pit pens and my, my gel pen perfectly fine. I do think that it would work well underneath their oil pastels. I didn't try that in this piece, but I probably will in a future piece. And if I do, I'll do a video on it. Might be a while because I have a colored pencil piece coming up that I want to work on. But yeah, I think it's great for a base for mixed media because it's matte. It actually kind of makes it a little bit easier to go over it with other materials. And so actually, hang on just one moment. I don't have my oil pastels handy, but I do have my Caran d'Ache Neo Color 1 wax pastels. These are the waterproof wax pastels, not their water soluble ones. So let's see... Because they're matte, I do think other materials will go over them really well. And so that is a plus side. Let me see if I can get... Oh, yeah. These go over it really well. 
So I do think these are a great watercolor for mixed media. Look how well that goes over that. So it can be a great base for other materials. I do have some colored pencils down here as well. I have um, a Karen Dosh Luminance, Polychromos, a Prismacolor, Holbein, Derwent Lightfast, another Polychromos. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Well, that could be because there's some of that crayon there. Let's go down here. Yeah, this definitely works really well for mixed media. I think this works really well as a base for colored pencil and as a base for the wax pastels. And I think that that's how I'm going to plan on using this palette from now on is as a mixed media component because it's really hard when something dries matte to get the, the vibrance, obviously the vibrancy, but um, to get the contrast that you need as well because it inevitably is just going to look lighter than it should even as a watercolor like watercolors do dry light but even layering I mean right in here I got the darkest part that I want but because it's so matte it just doesn't really have the pop that I like however because it's matte as I said numerous times already I think it's going to be perfect for mixed media and so that's how I plan to use this palette for mixed media practices and for sketchbook practices. So that's what I recommend it for, for the way that I work. Let me know if you've tried these paints before and if you've liked them and how you like to use them. And I, again, this is just a 12 set. I haven't tried all their colors. So some of their other colors may be different. They may not dry as matte, but that's what I got for this one. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Also, I love the, the way these lemons came out. I think I'm going to offer stickers of them. So I will link my print site in the description below if that's something you're interested in. All right. Thank you again. I will see you next week. You have a wonderful day. Bye. It cleaned up print version of the lemons as well as a sticker version are now available on my print site. Link is in the description below.